everybody, this is Josh Starnes again. I'm just going to do this video one more time and basically uh, what we're doing here is just showing that we can do uh, the dock over and over again. And what I'm kind of watching for too as well is what I need to do from the programming standpoint to make sure it happens over and over again without a problem. Right now it's just simulating it being on the charger and uh, everything working fine. So um, what we're going to do is, is we've got to uh, wake it up. So the first thing you got to do is, is initialize the connection, uh, which is done. Once the connection is initialized, uh, I believe you got to wait a few seconds before I come back up. So, because it doesn't do it right now. So, we'll wait a few more seconds here. And still won't go. You guys can count down the seconds how long it takes. Try it again. Still not going. I'm going to try hitting the initialize button again. Alright, I saw a blink from the blue light. And back it up. And it's still not working. Okay. Try it again. Still not working. Initialize again. So for unknown reasons, I have to press it three times. And make it go away real quick. Stop it. Clean C dock. I press clean and C dock. Uh, I did. It. So, so I got to perform this dance. This is the waggle. Wiggle, 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 wiggle. Just uh, uh, watching it. And alright, so it does it. I'm going to go ahead and wake it up from charge. Do this again. And it does not want to move. Don't know why it takes so long before it will move again. This is some kind of initialization thing. I'm gonna go ahead and disable sensors, and that should speed this up. So for some reason, and I don't know why, by clicking and then unclicking disable sensors, uh, it allowed it to move all of a sudden without having to wait that long period of time. And I'm going to prove that theory here real quick again by getting it to seek the dock one more time, just like it did before. Awesome. All right. So it is, again, it's three for three in a row, no problem. Got it about five feet away in the opposite direction and turned around and found it. Uh, and take in mind that, you know, the platform that's on top of it actually prevents the IR from, from being able to view beyond 180 degrees. So it has to turn around and figure that out. Uh, I'm going to just kind of follow that theory of disabling sensors. Uh, again, I'm, I'm clicking the disable sensors and then I'll click it back again. So I just clicked it off and clicked it back. Now I'm going to hit the back button and it works. So for some reason this works consistently. We're going to bring it about five feet away, stop it, I hit the clean button, which does nothing, and see the dock. So we're going to turn around, it's going to see the dock, and go back to it. So, wonderful. All right, it's four and four. So we're going to go ahead and uh, go ahead and uh, I'm going to click the disabled servo, disabled sensors again. So now they're enabled. Then click it again to disable. And somehow this jump starts it. So if I can do this in script somehow or another, I can do this over and over again. And we'll see what happens if I get a little close to it before I initialize. And we'll see what happens here if the light tries to go away or something and what it does. So that is pretty much a failure at this point. And the only way I can get it out of the docking 
mode at that point was to click the disable sensor and then click it again. I have no idea why that is what actually uh, will catch its attention, but it will. So, not bad, four out of five. Uh, apparently the secret to this is for it to be far enough away to be able to see the dock and then it can kind of do its thing. Let's see if I drag it back over here. Get out of the way. Big me. Clean and see dog. See if that helps. Do that again. Come on, seek the dog. Don't look good. Not my third one can't understand. Please don't. You're going to in there, aren't you? Yes, you will. Because you're eating people like that. Oh, and it did it anyway. Woo! Alright, well that shows that I can do it. Um, anytime you're working with this, apparently if you disable sensors and re-able sensors each time you do something new then it, there won't be any delay. So that's what I found so far. I'll turn this around so you guys can see me. That's what I found so far is if you will just uh, uh, each time just disable and re-able. And what I'll do is I'll show you on here exactly what I am doing. And I don't like that this really isn't focused all that well. There we go. A little better. So right now is is docked so the only way we can get it to move is going to be to disable re-enable don't know why just how it works now i can move it you see it's moving all right and uh let's see if i can just okay so so you see here that's what i had to do Okay, and then what you got to do is, is to get it to dock while it's running, you got to go up here and hit clean, click it, and then immediately after, hit seek dock, and that will start the Roomba waggle. Also, you can power this off remotely, I mean, if that's what you want to do, um, but you don't have to. And uh, it would be kind of nice if there was a power on, but it, it won't power on. Uh, you can, however, just not hit power off. The Roomba will stay uh, in a standby mode like it normally does, and uh, at any point in time you can give the initialize command, and it's pretty much equal to turning it on. The thing doesn't have an off button anyway, even if you just press the off button, all that happens is the LEDs go off, but uh, everything else still runs. Uh, it's still, it's IR sender is still on, uh, you can still see that, that everything is still functioning. Uh, it does very little to reduce battery life, uh, battery uh, consumption. It will still go dead eventually. So I just want to let you know that. So uh, this is the last installment today. I'm going to a Halloween party, and uh, my, I guess I'll just go as myself or something. I don't know. I thought about just getting a blanket, maybe a little pig nose, being a pig in a blanket. Um, I could be Duff Man. I could be that. Um, or for the old school guys, I could be Quill Man, wrap a belt around my head. Um, I don't know. I guess I could just be a, a, a crazy robot scientist and bring Roomba with me and keep it my, under my arm all the time. Um, I could do that. I'm sure that would be a, a great party thing. So anyway, um, I'm going to go ahead and upload this video. Good successes. I uh, had to figure out how to do all this. And um, I hope everybody else benefits from the videos too as well. Uh, again, if you're not already on easyrobot.com, I encourage you to go there. Lots of good information for hacking different kinds of robots. If you're hacking something new, by all means, bring it by. There's lots of people who are interested in hacking cool things. As long as it's cool, it's going to, you know, it's going to get everybody's attention. So there's dozens of people, if not hundreds, that are on there to help you at any given time. Uh, and even the, you know, owners of the company, they're they're on there all the time saying, "Hey, how's it going? How can I help you? How can I help you use software?" It's a uh, it's a great place to be so i encourage you to go there it's easyrobot.com uh coming soon will be my website which is uh, probably going to be just starnslaboratories.com um or josh starns labs uh, i haven't picked which one i will add it into the description and probably a little linky at the bottom or the side um once I do have that up, it's not up yet, but right now you can see all my projects that involve EasyRobot on EasyRobot.com under the pro project section 
or if you view me in any of the uh, forum posts, if you click under the information tab under my uh, name, you'll be able to see um, all my projects and posts. So feel free to read through all those. And you'll be able to see the wonderful goodness.